Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk you through a problem in Excel that will show you how you can evaluate a project that is going to help you cut down on some of your operating costs. So this would be an example of a project that does not necessarily help you sell more, but it does improve your operating income because it helps you cut down on some of the costs that you incur to support the same sales that you have right now. This problem will also help you appreciate the importance of depreciation in calculating your operating and financial cash flows and therefore in determining whether the investment is worthwhile or not. Okay, enough talk, let's get to the problem. So suppose your company is considering buying a new water filtration system with an installed cost of $385,000. So this is the cost that you're gonna incur. In the world of finance, we call it capital expenditures or CapEx. So this cost will be depreciated straight line to zero over the project's five year life. So this is important information. On the books, you're gonna depreciate the asset on a straight line basis. So each year, the depreciation expense is gonna be fixed. And by the end of the project's five-year life, you're depreciating it so that at the end of five years, its book value, which is its worth on the books, is going to be zero. Now, at the end, the system can be scrapped for $60,000. This is a very, very important point. What you can sell the asset for or scrap it for in the market is called its market value. The market value can be and often is different from book value. Book value of an asset is determined by the initial acquisition cost, of course, but then also how you are choosing to depreciate your asset. On the other hand, the scrap value or the market value is a function of what the market believes that asset is worth in the market. This is an important point because as you will see, it will have an impact on our financial cash flows at the end of the project's life when we are looking to scrap our investment. Now the question further states that the filtration system will save the firm $135,000 per year in pre-tax operating costs, okay? And the system requires an initial investment in networking capital of $35,000. So the question is, if the tax rate is 21% and the discount rate is 10%, what is the NPV of the project? That's the first part. And the second part is, how would your answer be different if the system qualifies for 100% bonus depreciation? Now, bonus depreciation is something that came about in 2017 by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and it generally applies to depreciable assets with a recovery period of 20 years or less and certain other property. Now in this video, we're not gonna talk about which assets qualify and which do not, and some of the nuances for 100% bonus depreciation. What this question will help you do is appreciate how if you take 100% depreciation on an asset, how that influences the cash flows and hence the NPV or the worthiness of an investment. Now, in order to attempt this question, the thing that you must realize that to evaluate any investment, what we're really interested in is what is the financial cash flow or free cash flow that this project is going to help generate for us. And in a previous video, I've explained that financial cash flows or free cash flows can be calculated for any investment as earnings before interest and in taxes net of taxes, so one minus T represents how much after taxes is left of earnings before interest in taxes. You add depreciation because it is a non-cash expense. You subtract capital expenditures and you subtract any changes in net worth and capital. Now, if you want more insight into why this equation looks the way it does, well, there's a separate video that I have on that and I encourage you to take a look at that. For the purposes of this video, all that I'm going to do is implement this equation to help you see how you can determine the financial cash flows of this particular investment and then use that 
in conjunction with the discount rate to calculate the NPV. So in order to do that, here I have a framework which will help me calculate earnings before interest and taxes, the operating cash flow, which is EBIT net of taxes plus depreciation. I'm going to subtract CapEx. I'm going to subtract changes in net working capital to get financial cash flows. And because this investment is going to help us generate cash flow over five years, I am going to calculate these cash flows over the next five years. Now, the first thing you must appreciate about this project is that this project is not going to help us sell more. So the additional sales or incremental or extra sales because of this project is actually going to be zero and zero and zero and zero and zero. This is very, very important. We are always interested in the extra or the incremental cash flows that a project is going to generate. Just because I'm saying that sales are zero does not mean that the company is generating zero sales it just means that because of this investment the company is not going to be selling anything extra now that makes you question you know why is this investment worthwhile why should we even do this well because certain investments are worthwhile not because they help you sell more but maybe because they help you cut down on your costs in fact if you take a look that is exactly what this project is about it says look it's going to help us save $135,000 per year in pre-tax operating costs. What does that mean? This means that costs are going to be negative $135,000, okay? What does this mean? Costs are going to be lower by this amount. It's not that you're incurring negative costs, but the extra costs are $135,000 less, and this is gonna be true across the board. Now, depreciation. If we assume that the asset is going to be depreciated straight line over the next five years, this is really as simple as $385,000 divided by five. And this number is $77,000 and we can copy this through and through. This is depreciation. So now if you calculate earnings before interest and taxes, this is always going to be calculated as incremental sales minus incremental costs Notice that I'm going to be subtracting a negative number, and that is what causes the EBIT to be higher. And then I'm gonna subtract depreciation right over here. So that gives me earnings before interest and taxes of $58,000, and this is gonna be true for the first five years. Now, we are going to be owing taxes on this incremental income that we are earning. How much taxes? Taxes are 21% of EBIT. So that is 12,180. Again, this goes through and through, which means that what is left after taxes, which is 79%, is just 58,000 minus 12,180. And again, I'm going to copy this and paste this through and through. What is important is for you to realize is that your operating cash flow, which is the cash flow that you're generating from your operations, is not this. Why? Because $77,000 was depreciation, which was a non-cash expense. This actually never left the business. And so technically you have this plus the amount of depreciation that you took. So your operating cash flow is basically 122,820. And this is gonna be true for the rest of the five years. Now, the reason why this asset is going to yield these cash flows to us is because today, at time period zero, we are going to be investing in that asset, right? How much is it that we're spending? Well, CapEx, we know, is $385,000. This is what we spent on the asset. This is what we spent on today at time period zero. So by the end of the year, all this good stuff, and by the end of year two, all this good stuff can happen, and this can happen for the rest of the five years. So investment happens today. Of course, today is the time period we're investing, so it doesn't generate any operating cash flow. In fact, you can say that this is essentially zero at this time period. The other thing that we're doing today in order to operationalize all this investment is that we're investing something in networking capital. The question says the system requires an initial investment in networking capital of $35,000. Okay, so this is $35,000. What I want to remind you 
is that what we're always interested in is not networking capital per se, but changes in networking capital, because it is the changes that tell us how much extra we are spending on short-term assets and therefore how much extra money is getting tied up in networking capital. Now, a couple of things are gonna happen at the end of the project's life. Number one, when the project will end at the end of year five, you typically recover all your investment in networking capital. Think of networking capital as inventory. All of your money, $35,000, was always tied up in inventory when you were operational. So imagine you were running like a jewelry store or something. So every time somebody bought a necklace, you had to put another necklace back in the shelves because, hey, you had to lure customers in. So as long as you were running the jewelry store, a certain amount was always tied up in stuff that was there for display. But as you're wrapping up your investment, now if somebody buys a necklace, you're like, yeah, I'm winding it up already, so I don't need to replace my inventory with anything else. I'm not going to be selling anymore. So all that money that is tied up in networking capital that is going to come back to you and the way we recognize this is that at the end of five years we say negative thirty five thousand dollars because your networking capital just like it at the beginning of the project it went from zero to thirty five thousand so the change was thirty five thousand now it's going from thirty five thousand to zero right because you don't need any networking capital so the change is negative $35,000. So that's the first thing that happens. Now, the second thing that happens is that by the end of the project's life, you don't even need this filtration system. So you're going to sell it. So you're going to say, okay, I'm going to sell it. And because the scrap value is given $60,000, you might say, oh, 60,000, this is what I get. Well, not really, because guess what happens when you sell an asset, which is worth more in the market and it's worth less on your books then technically you're making a profit well technically speaking you're making what is called a capital gains and guess what irs says hey you're making profit and you're not telling me about it you owe me taxes and so you have to pay taxes on the difference between what you're selling the asset for which is sixty thousand dollars and what is the asset worth on the books, which by definition is zero because you're depreciating its straight line. And so technically what you take home is not the full 60,000, but the 60,000 less the taxes that you owe on the difference between the market value of the asset or the scrap value and the book value of the asset. So what you really take home is basically this amount. Now be careful because uh, this 47,400 is actually appearing as a positive number. I don't want to subtract a positive number in the end. So I'm going to put some parentheses here and some parentheses here and take this entire thing and multiply by negative one. I basically want to ensure that this number is appearing as a negative. Why? Well, because when the time will come to calculate financial cash flow, I'm going to calculate this as operating cash flow minus the capital expenditure minus the changes in networking capital. I do this when I copy this formula and paste this through and through. Notice that here I'm doing operating cash flow, subtracting a negative number and subtracting another negative number, which makes which ensures that this is actually getting representative as a positive or cash inflow. And now our work is done because if we want to calculate the net present value of this investment, you have the discount rate that's given 10%. You highlight all these numbers and then you add the initial investment. The net present value comes out to 96,748.35 because this is a positive NPV project. Makes sense for you to do it. The second part of the question asked you, how would your answer be different if this system qualified for 100% bonus depreciation? All you got to do is make an adjustment here in your depreciation expense. 100% bonus depreciation means that you can depreciate the entire asset in the first year. So your depreciation expense in the first year will be the full $385,000 right here. That means that next few years, it will actually be zero because you fully depreciated the asset in the first year. That's it. Everything else follows exactly the same way. 
the asset will still have a book value of zero by the end of its useful life because you depreciated it fully in the first year. However, now you see that the NPV is higher. Why? Well, obviously because you depreciated the full amount in the first year, so you get a lot of that benefit of the taxes that you save on your depreciation expense in the first year. And as we know from time value of money, the sooner we get our cash flows, the more valuable the investment is. And so you have a higher NPV. And so this is how you can evaluate a simple project which can help you cut costs and the effect of depreciation on your cash flows. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.